Mobility is an inherent part of the human condition. As individuals, as groups, as societies, it fulfills one of our most basic needs. The desire to move from A to B creates the small pathways we walk along. The roads, railroads, waterways, flight paths, and ultimately a vast global network of networks that enables 27 million journeys a day. A system in which we spend a substantial part of our lives within. It shapes our build environment. It shapes us. It is a system that is composed of and intersects with many other systems. It is a financial and economic system, a multi-trillion dollar economy, requiring the mobilization of public and private finance on a huge scale. An investment opportunity, an advertising opportunity. It is a technical system of chemicals, machines, and information. It is a social and cultural system, bringing people together while at the same time creating systemic inequalities. It is part of our identity and an expression of who we are. It is an environmental system for which we drill through mountains, pour concrete and tarmac into the ground, and pour CO2 into the atmosphere. It is truly astounding the power that mobility has to unlock opportunities and economic development. A whole chain of positive outcomes such as better access to jobs, to markets, access to education, healthcare, etc. Indeed, access to virtually all of the things we need to thrive is dependent upon mobility. With it, people can grow and cities flow. Without it, we stall and struggle. The history of our transport system is a long one. It is an ancient system with layers of history built one on top of another. It embodies the successive changes in our civilizations from the first pathways to the ancient Roman roads, to the industrial age railroads, to the global air transport network of today. As with other areas, the 20th century was to usher in an explosion of innovation in transport motorized air transportation, tramways, buses, underground rail, bulk ships, helicopters, motorcycles, and of course, the automobile. Today, transportation is again in a period of transformation at the intersection of changes in the natural environment, technology, social, and cultural expectations. Driven by population growth and increasing prosperity around the world, global passenger transport demand will more than double between 2015 and 2050. Transportation systems, particularly in urban areas, are already overwhelmed by demand. At the same time, urban populations are set to increase by 50% by 2050, making the effects of urbanization, including pollution and traffic congestion, increasingly difficult to manage. At the same time, we find transportation at the epicenter of a climate emergency being responsible for almost one quarter of global CO2 emissions, with much of the issue hinging around the dependency on personal car mobility. The significance of the car and modern mobility is difficult to understate. Globally, mobility is the second largest expenditure in a household, creating an annual market of 10 trillion. 85% of which lies with car ownership. The personal car during the 20th century was a symbol of independence, financial security, and adulthood. Now the freedom machine is becoming a symbol of frustration, wasted time, and high cost. The megacities of emerging economies are grinding to a halt with people left trapped in machine cages. With respect to transportation on planet Earth, we have managed to organize ourselves into an incredible and sometimes bizarre situation when looked at with fresh eyes. From Manila to Sao Paulo, the very same pattern around the planet. People spend hours every day nudging and bumping through masses of cars moving slower than the speed of walking, while fumes damage their organism and float up into the sky to pollute and destabilize the environment the system itself depends upon. The average speed on roads in Mexico City has dropped to 11 kilometers per hour. 
around the same as in 1910 when horse-drawn carriages were still on the roads. How do we create the freedom of mobility in the 21st century for a planet of 8 plus billion people? The challenge is huge and complex, but the stakes are high, socially, environmentally, economically. Today, we inherit an industrial age system of transport, as per other systems dominated by reductionist logic. This paradigm to the transport system has got us a long way. Widely available personal transportation vehicles and motorways to drive them on, but it has ended up with a heavy focus on individual vehicles at the expense of system-wide coordination. As always with reductionism, we optimize the parts, but this results in sub-optimization of the whole. The result? Lovely fast cars, but a hugely sub-optimal transport system when taken as a whole. What it takes to move beyond today's contradictions is not a better vehicle. It is a system. We need a system that is better than any of the parts. Shifting from a partial approach to a systems approach means elevating our thinking from vehicles to integrated service systems, mobility ecosystems. To change the whole system means changing our thinking about it, but also changing our way of valuing it, so that we start to account for all relevant factors. On the paradigm level, shifting from a mentality of transportation to that of access, how do we deliver access instead of more transportation? Thinking about the purpose of the system, what is the goal? To develop a system that really delivers the full set of requirements, social, economic, and environmental, an integrated full-cost accounting system is needed. A full-cost accounting system that represents the full set of factors involved enables us to make the right decisions about transport, both as individual users and as societies. On the structure level, what is the change in the structure of the system that needs to come about? How can we make the structural changes needed to move into a world of micro-mobility, moving from a centralized to a decentralized system? Thinking about the structure of our build environment and how to decentralize it with linked up multimodal transport hubs in 15 minute cities. Shifting from ownership to delivery of mobility as a service will be key to optimizing for the whole. Mobility as a service creates the framework for us to start to integrate the various forms of transport services into a single mobility service accessible on demand. At the component level, what are the changes and parts that need to be made? For example, switching from combustion engines to electric vehicles will clearly be part of this as will moving to autonomous vehicles. The technologies to support systems level change in transportation will be at the convergence of the Internet of Things, decentralized tech and advanced data analytics. Such technologies now allow us the opportunity to move away from a centralized, large technology systems approach to transport and shift to a more decentralized, micro-data-driven, peer-to-peer approach. Some decades ago, the HTTP protocol started to connect our personal computers and enabled them to exchange information. What followed was a revolution in communication that is still rocking the world. The same is now needed in transport to create those protocols so that everything and everyone can connect into mobility networks as service providers and as users. The Internet of Transport can unlock data to turn silos and transactional exchanges into open ecosystems. Here, the innovation challenge is about open transportation protocols for coordination so as to be able to unbundle verticals and centralized systems and shift them out to on-demand networks. If we really want to solve systems-level challenges, this is a question of coordination, adaptation, and intelligence on that level, which comes through a decentralized architecture of interaction supported by open protocols. The transport system of tomorrow will be both modular and integrated. Complex ecosystems based around connectivity protocols, data, and peer value exchanges. Mm -hmm.